Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to the fifth episode of Bridge the Gap. In our today's lesson, we'll be talking about a technique called unit conversion. It's a very important skill and students must know that because one way in which an examiner makes a question difficult is by giving you data in different units. And you have to convert those units into the required essay-based units to make sure that your answer is right. So in this lesson, we'll be talking about how to insert a prefix, how to remove a prefix, and how to deal with conversions if you have two units in a single derived unit. For example, if you have like kilograms per meter cube, and you want to convert it to gram per centimeter cube, or kilometers per hour to meters per second. So let's begin. Before we end up using or converting, we need to have an idea about the table that I have made over here. This table contains the prefixes that we have in our A levels. Till our O levels, they were from giga till nano. Now we have terra as well and peak as well. And it's quite easy for us to remember how this entire table works. Remember, from kilo, mega, giga to terra, the increments are in the power of 3. Or you can say the powers are a multiple of 3. Like kilo is 10 power 3, mega is 10 power 6, giga is 10 power 9, terra is 10 power 12. The same goes from milli till pico. Milo is 10 power minus 3, micro is 10 power minus 6, nano is 10 power minus 9, and then 10 power minus 12. It's just about deci and centi that you go from minus 1 to minus 2. So it's not that difficult for us to remember this entire table. Now, the rule goes like this. If you want to remove a prefix, you multiply the value by the exponent of that prefix. I'm repeating it again. If you want to remove a prefix, you multiply the value by the exponent of that prefix. Now, how do we do that? Let's see. We have 45,000 millinewtons and we want to convert it into newtons. I want to remove milli from here. So if you want to remove, you multiply. Multiply by the exponent of milli. So the exponent of milli is 10 power minus 3. So I'm going to multiply it by 10 power minus 3. You all have calculators and they're allowed in all papers of physics. All you can do is multiply 45,000 with 10 power minus 3 and you have 45. So the value is 45 newtons. That's your answer. You can do this on another option as well. That, for example, 6.5 exponent minus 8 gigajoules. Want to convert it in back to joules. So I want to remove giga. I have to multiply. Giga has 10 power minus 10 power plus 9 as its exponent. So I'm going to multiply it by 10 power 9. 6.5 exponent minus 8 multiply by 10 power 9. The answer is 65. 65 joules. So if you want to remove a prefix, you multiply your value by the exponent of that prefix. But if you want to insert a prefix, in case of insertion, you do the opposite. You divide. You divide your value by the exponent of that prefix. How do I achieve that? Look over here. We have a value 8.5 exponent minus 4 seconds, and I want to convert it into nanoseconds. I want to insert nano. So if you want to insert, you divide. Divide by the exponent of that prefix. So nano is 10 power minus 9. Well, the value is going to be like this, 8.5 exponent minus 4 divided by 10 power minus 9. You solve it on your calculator, 8.5 exponent minus 4 divided by 10 power minus 9. The value turns out to be 8.5 exponent 5 nanoseconds. You can do the similar step over here in our next question, which is 6.75 exponent 10. It's in grams and I want to convert it into teragrams. Terra is 10 power 12. You can see it over here. Terra is 10 power 12. So divided by 10 power 12. 6.75 exponent 10 divided by 10 power and plus 12. The value turns out to be 0. 0.0675 teragrams. So if you want to remove a prefix, you multiply. If you want to insert a prefix, you divide. But what if you want to convert your value from one prefix to another? Well, you combine both the rules. 
It's as simple. If I want to convert 540 megajoules to millijoules, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove mega first. That is, I'm going to multiply by 10 power 6. Mega has an exponent of 10 power 6. So remove mega. And now insert milli. To insert milli, you divide by 10 power minus 3. You have your calculator. You can simply calculate that 540 times 10 power 6 divided by 10 times 10, 10 to power minus 3. So the value turns out to be 5.4 exponent 11 millijoules. I combined both the rules. I removed mega first by multiplying it by 10 power 6 and then I inserted milli. So I divided the value by the exponent of milli that was 10 power minus 3. Similarly over here, 4.67 exponent 8, it's in nanojoules and I have to convert it into megajoules. First, it's time to remove nano. So I multiplied it by 10 power minus 9 and now dividing it by mega which is 10 power 6. So it's 4.67 exponent 8 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 9 divided by 10 power 6. The value is 4.67 exponent minus 7 megajoules. So that's how it works. Now, one important skill that we need to have this thing was comparatively easier. But the other skill is that when you have two units and we have to convert both of them together. For example, the unit was kilometers per hour and I had to convert it into meters per second or kilogram per meter cube to gram per centimeter cube. How do I go about this? Well, there is an easy way for this one. The easier way is to write it in fraction kilometers per hour to meters per second. Now you can convert the numerators and the denominators separately. Let's say I had a variable x which was in kilometers per hour and I want to find it in meters per second. So what I can do is first kilometers, first convert kilometers to meters. You have to remove kilo. So you multiply it by 10 power 3. Kilo is removed. Your numerator is converted. Let's move on to the denominator. You have to convert hours to seconds. We all know that in one hour you have 60 minutes and in every minute you have 60 seconds. So in general you have like 3600 seconds in one hour. So I can multiply this by 3600. Now you can write it out as x which is your velocity in kilometers per hour, multiply by 10 power 3 divided by 3600. Then you're going to multiply by the entire fraction. Your answer will be in meters per second. So what you're supposed to do is convert the numerators and the denominators separately. Separate conversions are the best technique. If I had to do it with kilogram per meter cube to gram per centimeter cube. This is another question, if I want to convert it in that way. So let's say this is kilograms per meter cube converting to grams per centimeter cube. Now, to convert from kilograms to grams, you have to remove kilo. So you multiplied it by 10 to the power 3. This was my variable x. From meter cube to centimeter cube. Now, look, I have to insert centi. So whenever you have to insert something, you divide it. You divide by the exponent. So I'm going to divide my denominator by the exponent of centi, which is 10 power minus 2. But there is a cube on my units. So if I had to convert from meter to centimeter, in that case, I only had to divide it by 10 power minus 2. This time I have to convert meter cube to centimeter cube. So I, what I have to do is divide it by the cube of that exponent. Whatever power you have, put that over there. It's the easiest way to remember. 
when you had to convert meters to centimeter, you just divided by 10 power minus 2. When you want to convert meter square to centimeter square, for example, you divided by 10 power minus 2 squared. If you want to convert from meter cube to centimeter cube, you divided by 10 power minus 2 cubed. Now, what you're supposed to do is you write it down like this x times 10 power 3. Now, to write down a division, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write 1 over here, which is an imaginary, we can say, a number that's always there. So I'm just going to write it down so that it becomes easier for my calculator to process that. Just power minus 2 cubed. You do that, your density will convert from kilograms per meter cube to grams per centimeter cube. You want to play with numbers? Let's do this. Let's take an example. If the velocity of an object was like 60 kilometers per hour, then I want to find out how much is it in meters per second. So what I can do is 60 kilometers per hour. I want to convert it into meters per second. So first multiplying by 10 power 3, then in the denominator multiplying by 3600. So the value is going to look like this 60 times 10 to the power 3 divided by 3600. So the value will turn out to be 16 to 10 power 3, 3600. It's 16.7 meters per second. Similarly, if you want to convert kilograms per meter cube to gram per centimeter cube, you can do the same thing. Let's say the density of something was 780 kilograms per meter cube, and I want to convert it into grams per centimeter cube. So what I can do is 780 kilograms upon meter cube, convert it into grams upon centimeter cube, convert the numerator first, multiplied by 10 power 3 because I had to remove kilo. Now converting the denominator, inserting a centi, that is dividing by 10 power minus 2, but it's cubed, so I'm going to place a cube on my conversion factor as well. Hence, this thing is going to look like 780 times 10 power 3 upon, I'm going to write 1 because I'm going to divide it, 10 power minus 2 cube. All you have to do is put the value exactly as written over here in your calculator and you're done. 780 times 10 power 3 divided by 1 division sign 10 power minus 2 cubed. cubed. Yes. Turns out to be 0 0.78 gram per centimeter cube. So that's how it works. So remember, my dear ones, it's pretty important for all of us to remember to convert between units. Read the question pretty clearly and be very, very aware that whenever an examiner is trying to make a question difficult, one way for him to do that is by giving you data in multiple units. You'll find questions in which out of four variables, three of them will be in different units and you have to convert them. So I hope this lesson will be fruitful for you guys in the upcoming year levels. Take care. Love us.